Hi and good morning. Yep, another little visit upstairs to the collection. I keep finding them. This time we've got a um, phone from 1960s. Uh, I think it started production in 61. And this was by Tesla. Designated T. 58 or T58. It's a Bakelite phone and once again very well made. We'll have a little look at the innards. But firstly, just show you what the outside looks like. You've got your handset there. I've taken the inserts out so you can have a closer look at those. We've got the case, the dial. I think this is the earlier, uh, not the early, a later dial, but I'm not 100%. I think that has been changed. But nevertheless, it's in fitting with this particular phone. And you've got an area there that has, um, which operates the earth, earthing buttons. Now let's turn him over and have a little look inside. There is the, the base, as I say, has got some writing up there, but unfortunately it is completely obliterated through, I suppose, age. You've got your regulating control there as well. It looks, it looks like it shows a date as well. I don't know whether it will come out better uh, from the video, I don't know, but... At the moment it doesn't show anything or can't see anything. Let's have a little look at the insides. Um, excuse that wire there. Um, that was obviously changed at some time. And um, the terminations to the slimmer cable which obviously is a new addition with the, uh, the standard plug as used in quite a few countries of the world. Not in England though, but nevertheless you can get adapters for that, so there's no problem. So that would have obviously been changed, and the old wire is the one you see there, obviously joined under the set of terminals. This phone's a rather unusual phone. As you can see, you've got, now if it was in America, they would call that box the network. And this would comprise the anti-side tone induction coil, uh, capacitors, one or more, perhaps a couple of resistors. Well, they will all be in there. Some may even be under the terminal strip. But it was, as I say, at that time it was, well, I've never known it before on a non-American phone. So it is a form of network. The bell has got a little bit of damage to the outer, the outer covering. It's okay though, the, the, the wiring is still intact. So there's no problem there. I don't know, I don't know when that happened certainly hasn't happened with me it was probably like it can probably be gently put but well it's, it's a, it, there's no damage there it's just it's damage to the outer coating or, or the uh, the yeah the coating round around it the wires are intact there's your gongs in the front there is your earth button and that shows through the case. Also I was lucky we had a diagram. There's the diagram. T58 on the top left hand corner. Hold it on there so you can see it's it's a nice easy diagram to, uh, to actually actually follow. 13 and 14 
are the terminals for the line called and they are shown there 13 and 14 and one way of checking that the bell wiring's intact and the capacitor's working is this I will show you here we've got a good old rapid test okay I could have brought the AVO out and fiddled about with that but this is much more convenient it's smaller and what we're going to do and this is going to be awkward with the handset on I don't know if I can do this because I'm holding this I can't really show show you but what you would do is to have the handset off hook so you're really looking at the bell coil and the and the capacitor and you'd apply your meter which is on the ohms rating and as you touch it on the two connections there the needle would kick at the moment it's going right across because the handset's off and I haven't got a spare hand to show show you but I can tell you what happens with the hat with the cradle down you would get a kick going up to about there to that point there about there it would kick reverse the leads and you get another kick and that is in fact the capacitor charging up through the bell wirings or the bell turns you charge the capacitor up by reversing it you discharge it and it kicks again and that is a, a quick way of checking your capacitors okay the capacitor here you can't see but it's in that box now what else have I got to say oh let me show you the dial got to do this carefully because the wire's not that long it's long enough I unfortunately I couldn't find a way of taking the cover off I know there's a there's a nice well made screw there but unfortunately it's held elsewhere so you have to imagine what it looks like through the the plastic it's a well made dial and it is the same style as the dial invented by uh, Siemens Halski it's that same type of dial so this is the dial we have on several of our other phones and I can't think of one at the moment uh, well I can but I can't think, think of the name Autophon my, uh, the Autophons I've got they use the same type of dial and you've got your two sets at the top you've got the impulse and at the, the lower one is the off normals so that's your dial um, yep yeah, there's a well made case it's in Bakelite uh, nice fixing screws with inserts screw the base is held on with two screws let's try to see there's various numbers on on the dial as well that might mean something to someone out there and you've got the uh, the Tesla sign there so yeah um, quite a well made phone it looks quite a classic phone to be quite honest um, the bell adjusters under there as you can see oh yeah I was going to mention the, um, the handset there's the handset you can take out both the receiver which you've got here the receiver there may even be a date on there 
let's have a look. It's obviously got the name Tesla, which it is. Can't see a date. Normally they date these. Oh, I don't know. That in there. Now, I can honestly say I can't see a date, but the, um, the transmitter's well made. This type I have come across before, perhaps on another Tesla phone, but it's, um, it is a transmitter which is familiar to me. Now, having a look at the receiver, receiver transmitter that's the receiver this is the transmitter always get those two mixed up why they can't call them earphone and uh, microphone I don't know but it I think it's traditional well here we have the transmitter or the microphone and you've got the uh, the Tesla name there as well so we know both those are made by Tesla. This is a, a typical type of transmitter which is found on loads of uh, the actual European type phones. Once again, looking for a date. And... I can't see a date. There's a code number there, but that's, I don't know what that means, but it's, it doesn't look, look like a date. So there we are. That's the, um, the other, other type of mouthpiece that they use. That's a typical earpiece that they use. And this one, by the way, has got a twisty cord. Originally, I think this would have had a pleated cord, but this cord has obviously been changed. And once again, I think the terminations have been done under, well, they, it's, I think things have been changed underneath. I'm not taking the, the terminals off, just leave it as it is. So that, more or less, is the Tesla... T58 telephone from Czechoslovakia made in the 60s I think they started in 1961 there's a little bit of blurb well more than a little bit of blurb on this phone if you look up uh, Google which tells you quite a bit um, Obviously one of their classic I just noticed slight bit of damage to the case. As I say, a blind man would like to see that. You wouldn't really notice it, but it just goes to show that Bakelite is very brittle and um, it will break very easy. So obviously take extra care. This case is, is virtually perfect. All right, it's got a, it's got two little areas, a little area that side as well, where the edge of the case has become, it's been damaged. But as I say, you wouldn't normally notice it, so I think we can accept that. Anyhow, I'm going to shut up now. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm actually sorting. The uh, the room upstairs out. That's the room I've got all the lamp. Most of the lamps are in there. Loads of the telephones. I'm sort of sorting out. I'm pretty sure I haven't put this one up in the past. If I have, I do apologise, but I don't think I have. Um, and yeah, I think that is it. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. Any questions, obviously ask. Yeah, I will get back to the uh, to answer some of the other que queries in the past.
it's a case of finding time. Also, I'm expecting another item through the post today. I'm not going to be beaten. Um, I did get a satellite receiver a couple of weeks ago. And unfortunately, I don't know how to work it. The manufacturers, or not the manufacturers, but the agents in this country are the most unhelpful people. They just don't want to know. They turn around to, you to and say, oh, did you buy it from us? And if you say no, oh, tough. Which, uh, that is no way of running a company. So I decided to go for another one. I thought, well, if that one works, I've got a spare. And the one I'm got getting is by Catherine, which is a very old German firm in the, the radio and communications business. Their stuff is normally good. So uh, this version hasn't got the bells and rattles, as they say on it. It's just got a basic, well, I want basic operation to get the thing to work so we'll see what happens if i can get them going i'll probably do a little video on that and on the other one which i got which is a good one but unfortunately the service or the help you get from the so-called importers or what but they make out there the agents in this country they just don't want to know and I think it's probably because they don't know themselves. So anyhow, that's the end of my little rant. Sorry about that. So once again, thanks again for watching. Thank you. I will turn this off and uh, put it up. Thank you.